Good evening. To me, it is now 9:21 p.m. at night. So, Sonic Frontiers is looking more and more hype for me. But ever since the combat was shown and you know there's some new moves like the parry and all that stuff, I want to go back to this game and see, you know. Was the Warhog really that bad? Since you know the Warhog is also a combat based, you know, character. Plus, it does have somewhat of an RPG element to it as well. So, uh, I want to go back to this, see what's up, see if this, if this still holds up. We're gonna go to Spinonia. I'm gonna play through this level and see how bad was the Warhog indeed. Uh, as you can see, as you can see, my best time is 22. Ignore the rank. I ignore that. Anyways, so at first I was gonna do the first night level of this game, but. Uh, let me see if I can show you. It isn't fair, because I can essentially one-shot everything in the first level, potentially in this level too. But, you know, I still wanna... wanna check this out and see if the Warhog still holds up mechanically. While we do that, we can talk a little bit of Frontiers, a little bit, you know... Alright. As you can see, with enemies blocking, I need to do a specific heavy combo in order to break the block as you could tell because even with the one shot move I was doing at the beginning uh, he was still able to block it so I had to first break its guard to then use it so it shows that even with the most simplistic stuff they still had some some way to not cheese it. One problem of this game though is the fact that it doesn't really incentivize you to try new combos. It's kind of like the problem I have to, with the new The World Ends With You game is that even though it has some death it doesn't really incentivize you to try anything new. Uh, if we could go... I think it was in skills? Yeah, if we go in skills, you can see that there's a lot. And a few that haven't unlocked yet, but there's, there's a lot you can do here. And a lot to experiment. I haven't unlocked a lot of it. But as you can see, there's a lot of combos in this game. And as you level up the... Let me tell you real quick. As you level up the combat stat, you get new stuff to play with. But the game doesn't really incentivize you to try all of these. Like, it's more so for style as you go along. This isn't really all that fair to them. Because <laughs> my strength is fucking a high level. Oh, nope. And 
If you want an easier time with the Warthog, because I know some people say that, oh, it's very janky or something like that, when in reality it isn't. That's another thing. Um, I feel like there's a lot of unwanted hate for the Warthog. Because, in general, the Warthog feels pretty smooth. And when it comes to that like, combos, there's a lot of stuff you can do with combos in this game. Especially as the Warthog. It's just that, you know, the game doesn't really give you that many opportunities to try all of them and doesn't really tell, like, encourages the player to try all of those. Is it really bad to have simple, um, combat? I'd say no. I mean... But one thing I always liked about some combat heavy games like Breath of the Wild or heck even hack and slash games is that there's oh they're always easy to pick up but hard to master and if you want to maximize certain things like for example in Sonic Unleash you obviously want to get get rid of the combat encounters as quick as possible well apart from trying new combos uh, leveling up the strength stat basically help you a lot on that. As you can see, I already one shot it oh, like half of these people. And that's where the problem with the Warhog, I think, comes is that when you reach this certain level like mine, you won't really have much of an incentive to try anything new per se. <sighs> but of course, if you're starting with the Warthog you know, fresh and all that, then I guess doing combos will help you in getting rid of combat encounters a lot faster. But my strategy, in general, whenever I play or replay this game from zero, is I go for strength at the beginning of the game. And to be honest, you don't need that much strength to do this kind of stuff, like, you know, one-shotting stuff and all that. You'll need at least, uh, I think you'll need at least 15 combat and 5 strength, I think. I, I, I don't remember at what level of combat you unlock the missile punch, which is this thing. Uh, once you unlock this and you have high enough strength, you basically one-shot bosses with it. <laughs> I'm not joking. Check this out. Okay, that's one. I lied. You two shot bosses. <laughs> oh my god. But to be honest, this doesn't make the Warthog any less fun to me. One thing I like about RPG mechanics in beat em ups and all that is basically this. It's the fact that you can break the game. It's kind of the reason why I like something as stupid as Skyrim, in a way. <laughs> Even though Skyrim by far isn't the greatest RPG at all. Like, I wouldn't call Skyrim a great RPG. Um, as a fun game, it's. it's 
really fun what the stuff you can do in it. Like, if you're really good at enchanting and crafting in that game, I I'm getting sidetracked on my bad, but I just want to pull this out. If you're really good at crafting and enchanting in Skyrim, you can make some really broken stuff. And it's really, it's just really fun. And that's kind of like the fun I receive from Sonic Unleashed. It's when you maximize certain stats or level up certain stats early in the game and then you just break the game. And if they're gonna bring RPG mechanics into Frontiers, I would like to keep the fact that you could potentially break the game <laughs> once you learn what stats to allocate what you know what skill points to allocate and all that uh let's see any complaints i've heard about the warthog mm -hmm. i guess some people don't like the QTEs, which i understand I myself don't like it when it's like overused and all that. But uh, the QTEs in the Warthog stages are mostly optional. What I mean by that is when with the combat stuff, uh, the enemies will have some like flashing symbol above their heads. That's that's a signal for a QTE. It can do once you grab them. You don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, I mean, you could if you want to, but there's no real reason to do it. Like, at all. It is, it is completely optional. And to be honest, if you have the strength level enough, you can just... You'll, you'll, you'll mostly not even notice that the QT was started. Because if you're just mashing in like a maniac, then QTEs will mean jack shit after that. I do hope they add like a combat trial or something like that in Sonic Frontiers. Oh. Nope. I kind of messed up there, but got it. So now that I'm doing this, why not? Why not? Uh, I'll I'll aim for a higher rank now that I'm here. <laughs> Which I'll doubt I'll get. So overall, I, I guess I won't have that S rank anymore. So overall, as a fan of beat em ups and hack and slash, I'll say that the Warthog is is a deep, uh, is is a deep. I'm messing up, my bad. As I was saying, 
as a fan of beat em ups and hack and slashes, the Warhog is pretty deep, it's just that it needs encouragement. When you look at stuff like Monster Hunter or I don't know, um, Devil May Cry, it gives you incentive to try new combos and it gives you incentive to be more defensive. If you look at stuff like Dragon's Dogma, it gives you incentive to look out for your stamina while at the same time looking for elemental effects on combos you can try out because different enemies will have different attributes. This game does have enemies with different attributes which is a key part for a lot of beat em ups and hack and slashes. But the thing is the elements and attributes of the enemies in this game are so far few between that it doesn't really give you much in terms of what you can do. What I mean by that is that when it comes to beat em and hack and slashes you essentially need the incentive to either play defensive or play offensive. That's what gives the uh, this genre the fun it does. It's kind of what makes Souls games really fun to play because because it gives you the incentives to be defensive, careful, and then the offense. It's basically like a like any old fighting game in a way. And again, basic combat isn't really all that bad, but when you look at stuff like let's say Kingdom Hearts 1, for instance. In Kingdom Hearts 1. Uh, I'm gonna have to do a leap of faith. And go in there with a D rank. So in Kingdom Hearts 1, the combat is pretty simple. It does have like eight spells for you to try and some summons, which are pretty cool. And <sighs> so as I was saying, uh. It's games like Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts 1, it has pretty simple combat. What makes it deep, apart from being able to combo spells into, you know, your attacks, is the tech point system. If everybody remembers that in Kingdom Hearts 1, when you do stuff like attacking uh, a projectile or a parrying and all that stuff counters which are mind you those aren't simple button presses those are things you have to actively you know try to aim for uh, basically for example if an enemy shoots you a projectile you'll have to essentially hit it back manually or or, you know, try to use a spell that quits to the enemy's uh, elemental weakness. The, these are what rewards you with tech points, which are extra experience points you get in combat encounters. I hate this leap of faith, I swear to fucking... So basically... In, if in Sonic Frontiers they give you some incentive to try other things, it could be as simple as it gives you extra XP for doing something, you know, like maybe parrying a projectile attack, maybe being able to maybe being able to do a continuous infinite combo without getting hit 
you know, uh, trying things that will... Those are lame examples, but <laughs> what I'm getting at is that if you're gonna make the combat simple, you have to give us a little something to uh, engage us in the combat. I wanted to aim for an S rank. <laughs> uh. At least it's not E. Well, that left a sour taste in my mouth, so how about we try something else? Oh, you know what? I want to show you this. So, this is why you need this much strength. <laughs> and this is why leveling up strength is crucial. Oh my god, this is so much fun. Alright. So how about we try one more level? Nah then. If you guys want me to do a full playthrough of this game before Sonic Frontiers comes out, which should be this November actually, and this game isn't awfully long either. Like this game is definitely not long. It might be long to uh, here. See, there's an enemy that's blocking. Break block. Bam bam bam. There's also the killer wasp which literally dodge everything and they're annoying as fuck. That's my phone again. The my my bad. But there's some killer wasp that dodge every attack. Uh yeah, they're annoying as fuck. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm gonna play the level where they appear, because uh, they were a pain to deal with. <laughs> so, in terms of enemy patterns, there's... There's ones that block you, whether it be, you know, a typical block or a shield, or... There's also the ones that, you know, try to swarm you. There's some floaty guys, I forgot their names, uh, but they're tiny. And basically, they roll around you and they try to go around you and all that. They also kind of dodge your attacks. And then there's the killer wasp that literally dodge all your basic attacks and you have to like try to hit them with aerials or 
Yeah, try, because they'll dodge those too. And then there's the wizards, which heals monsters and basically becomes a priority. Then there's also... Huh, I think those are pretty much all the archetypes for this beat'em up. So as you can see, pretty basic, um, in terms of like enemy archetypes, you'll fight as the Warhog. I just hope that we get better archetypes in, in Frontiers. So far we've only seen one island, and I'm, I'm, I'm being out. I'm being very optimistic, also very excited, because actually the game actually looks really fun. I don't know why IGN showed the... <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is that IGN kind of messed up. It, mm, I don't know why they were playing so... I guess so stiff. When other gameplay show otherwise, the game actually looks really smooth, smooth turning, smooth combat, like... I don't know what IGN was thinking. Oh wait, hold on. I need to see something, because I forgot how to do it. One. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The fuck? Oh yeah, these guys are kind of annoying. One, two, three, four. One, two. That's how you do it. One. Bam. There we go. As you can see, flailing wildly will almost never work. I mean, it could work, but certain situations do not permit you that. Like those guys with the electric shields. I hate that. The camera turning messes up. This this is this is really tricky. <gasps> Anyways. Nah, I can't end it like this, can I? <laughs> um, I mean, I should. Uh, this is gonna take a while, and one critique I have is that the Warhawk stages are pretty damn long. So, I'm gonna leave it to my death for now. And that'll be all for now. This was just a quick little video as I give my thoughts on the Werehog and talk about Frontiers uh, combat a little bit. So, yeah, um, I'll see you guys next time, I guess.